Gina DeLuca here. All right, today we're gonna to be doing some product testing. We have My Artscape Acrylic Paints. The packaging is epic, let's just say that. Uh, they get an A plus on the packaging. This is uh, pretty impressive. You've got like a briefcase type thing here. Very, uh, the packaging is great. And one of the things I like about it, the, the sealer comes off very easily. It's just a clear plastic thing and comes off with no effort. Sometimes you really have to fight those. The colors I'm using today are titanium white. Lemon yellow. There is no magenta, so I'm using crimson. Generally, I do magenta in these test pours. And my favorite blue, phthalo blue. So we're going to give this a try. Let me show you this one. This is really pretty. It's called Pale Mauve Mauve but it's, it's a little more purple than a, than a mauve, 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 however you pronounce that, but it's still a very pretty color. So let's give these a shot. I'm going to do my typical uh, wandering ring pour as my first one. And I'll probably get to two today in this video. So let's get started, shall we? Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute. If you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. And each technique card has an, a, a photo of the technique, an associated video here on YouTube to give you all of the information that you need the exact colors, the recipe, the consistency. There's a little tip box right there. Color palette. And these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette. You can add colors to that or use them by themselves. And then there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors. You can use some of the colors. Y'all know I'm a fan of minimal colors. You can uh, mix and match the techniques with other color palettes. You can use the color palettes for much more than just pouring. Whatever art form you're into. And these are available at my website, ginadeluca.net. All right, I'm going to put some paint in a cup. alternate my colors. I will start with white. Oh, I guess I should tell you. <laughs> These are mixed one part paint and two parts flow draw. They are then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% flow draw until I get the consistency I want. The consistency that we're working with, you can see it's thicker than what I usually do. This is about a three on my consistency scale. I am trying to avoid cells. And then white again, just to add some separation. Yellow. Blue. And white again. Uh, 
and then red and yellow. Touch of white. Okay, that should be plenty. I'm not using a base coat, so I'll need a little more paint than I would normally use for this size. Normally I would just do three ounces, but because I'm not using a base coat, I'm doing four. All right. Let's make a mess, shall we? As I get to the end, I get closer and a little slower. Okay, just gonna hang this out on the edges a little bit, just to help myself out when I get there. Okay, looks like this is going to be the first corner to start with. All right, I'm going to come to this opposing corner. I kind of go with uh, Whichever direction looks like it's going to make a corner the best. It looks like it's going to be this way. May have used a bit too much white in the bottom. Right, touch up these corners a bit. All right, we are getting a little bit of cell action going on there. So we will let this sit and see what it does. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna put some uh, paint in this here cup. I'm going to do the same order. I have thinned these out just a bit. Uh, I'm about a two now on my consistency scale. Sometimes when you do a flip cup with no silicone, you get this beautiful, it almost looks like layers of silk or chiffon. And 
I love the way it looks. Doesn't always work out that way, but we're gonna find out if it does. Okay, Ooh, gotta make my X. Can't forget my X. I mean, I wish I could forget some of my X's, <laughs> but not the one that goes in the cup. I'm just gonna take a skewer and just make an X. Well, that's it. was level at one point, apparently it's not anymore. Okay. Definitely getting some cell action here. Okay, let's give her a stretch and see what happens. Probably not going to be getting too much of that laciness or that uh, like chiffon look because we're getting cells. Bringing my weight back to center. Which way does it want to go? I think it wants to go this way. a lot of cells. Help it along the sides here. Okay, wow me, that is a whole bunch of cells. Let's try to bring the center back a little bit. Okay, we're gonna, uh, let's see. All right, I'm gonna let this sit for a bit and bring you in for a close up. Those, oh, I mean, that looks like I have Rainex in there. That is so many cells, that's crazy. Okay. Back in a few. All right, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do a straight pour. I have thinned these out just a hair more. 
if you can see, it's kind of hard to see when the cup's not full. I'm about, this might be like a one and a half, not quite a one, but there were so many cells in that last painting. I'm curious to see what this does in a straight pour. All right, let's do it. Okay, well that white definitely took over. Let's catch this corner so we can stretch that out, hopefully. Don't want to lose too much of that. It's going to be a lot of white in this painting unless I get some cells popping up. I don't like doing pours without a base coat, but I didn't want to mix my brands. lose all these colors. White is very dominant. Let me just see if I can squeeze some of this out just to get it to run easier. This edge here is not covered. Maybe I can get some more stretch in there, get some of those colors to pop out. There we go, that helped. Let's see if we can make something happen. This white behaves kind of strangely compared to other whites. Generally, the white will sink And give you cells 
and it's really just sitting on top, which is very, very unusual for a white. Okay, well, we're gonna let this sit and see what happens. And I will uh, bring you in for a close up of all three. Back in a few. All right, before I show you uh, the dried test pieces, I wanted to show you the piece from the other day. It dried uh, in a very interesting way. There is texture, probably because of the Liquitex pouring medium. I never ever get texture with Floetrol alone. So let's see if I can grab a hold of this to show you. You can see like it's raised on the edges. So it has a very, very reptilian look, which is super cool. The and in the center, you can see it there a little easier. And this black part, I don't know if you can tell, but like when you move, it shifts and looks super cool. And I'm terrified I'm going to lose that when I varnish. I did get like, there's the schmutz that I couldn't get out of there. It always seems to show up when it dries. But you can see the texture there. So when this is varnished, it will have a bit of texture. I probably won't do a lot of layers like I usually do because I want to keep that texture because I think it's pretty nifty that lizard-like scale appearance. The gold is hard to see right now, but when that is varnished, you'll be able to see that easier. Those little gold loops. But the, the black paint itself, I guess when it mixed with that gold, Gave it texture. It's kind of funky. But yeah, so I just wanted to show that to you. Excited and nervous to see what happens to this when I varnish it. I'm really hoping that that effect stays in the black. I'm going to have to try to do some surgery on that blob. But there you have it. Tons of sparkle, nifty texture. Mother of Dragons, this one's going to be called. All right, let's show you the others. Okay, here is the Wandering Ring Pour. The, the signs hold up well. I'm not crazy about how these colors mixed. I'm wondering if Floetrol might not be the ideal pouring medium for these. The, the white behaves kind of strangely. It doesn't really uh, blend with the other colors. Generally, when I do a wandering ring pour and I put it in between the layers, you get more blending of colors with the white. And that didn't happen. Very strange. And of course, it got cells anyway. Probably flow draw. And we have, well, we'll do it in order. 
This looks like I sprayed it with Rain-X. I did a test bore where I sprayed it with Rain-X and it looks so much like this, it's crazy. If I knew where it was, I would show you. But uh, that is a very unusual effect for a flip cup with no silicone. You can see I had a little accident there while I was cleaning up my edges, very naughty. But yeah, it created a lot of cells and they're not cells that I'm in love with. So reveal a gun of meh on this one too. And then there's this one. The white is just behaving very strangely. This is not what happens typically in a straight bore. The white doesn't sit on top, generally speaking. Even if you use colors that aren't typically cell makers, you, uh, you still get some cells and some from the white sinking. And that did not happen. So, uh, yeah, there we have it. Uh, I'm, you know, Perhaps I'll try these again with a different pouring medium and see if the results are different. And uh, if the results are not different, then I will say reserve these paints for brushwork because uh, I'm not crazy about how they worked out for pouring. All right, y'all, that's it for me. Check out the description box below for all the links to my Amazon store. Anything you purchase there, uh, if you enter through that link, anything you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Also, you'll find the link to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. My website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And last but certainly not least, our Facebook group, go make some art, join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. All right, y'all, that is it for me. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>